It was the swinging 60s, the summer of love. We were all free spirited and everything felt fine and great. Fast forward like 40 years and now we're wearing clip on dreads and talking about curing our kidney problems via our own methods. Screw a doctor, screw professional help. I don't think you need to go to university or college for like eight years to study how to be a doctor. I can cure it with my cosmic powers that be. Dear Lord, far gone and far cries are to the original subculture movement of being a hippie. What we have on TikTok now is, well, it's a mess. And today I want to talk about it. Right, yes, hello there. My name is Cowder's Life. And if you're new to this channel, we do video essays talking about things we see on the internet. And then we all discuss it in the comments below. So if that sounds like fun for you, please feel free to subscribe. Okay, cool. And if you're not new here, hello again, old friends. It's me, Cow. And if you saw my community post recently, I've actually been pretty tired. But, and it's a fun but, I've been hanging out with my friend more recently who does like graphic design and like makes clothing. And together we've been like exploring the concept of digression together. As you all know, I digress a lot in my video essays. And we've kind of been like drawing that out and what that looks like to me and I've been having a lot of fun with that. But anyways that's digression in itself and if anything more comes of that then I'll let you all know but that's been a really therapeutic fun experience for me. But yes today we are talking about hippie culture on TikTok and why it can be deemed as slightly problematic, really quite problematic and a far cry from its original roots of being like fighting against the machine and being a counterculture movement. So hippies kind of emerged in the 1960s as a countercultural movement to challenge mainstream social norms. You know, things like consumerism, being anti-Vietnam War, social inequality, racism. It really, at its core in the OG days, had lots of good things about it. And because of that, lots of young people in America swamped towards it and adopted this culture or at least became part of it, became part of the movement. Because who doesn't love ideologies and values deep rooted in like peace and love? That sounds fun, right? I'm sure if you ask your like legal guardians about like hippie culture, they'll talk about the summer of love and like connecting with earth, the psychedelic music scene. You had to be there, man. Like all these harmonious, beautiful pictures come to your head, right? You know, from the poignant moments like Woodstock, the anti-war campaigns, hippie culture has definitely left its mark on things like social politics, politics, fashion, music, cinema, all these things, it was a really big movement. And there were lots of negatives. I don't want to point it as like it was just all this perfect thing in the 60s. There were like bad things that happened too. But for the basis of this video essay, I kind of just want to talk about at its core, what it was all about. Peace and love and having a good time. Just don't drug test any of them. And as we now like fast forward to like present day, we find far echoes and distant calls of the hippie movement on social media like on TikTok. But few and far between are the people actually still spearheading hippie culture. Much rather people playing dress up because that's what a lot of social media is now. Cosplaying different cultures and then securing the bag and dipping. Kind of. Sort of. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that but hopefully it will become more clear throughout this video essay. But I do think I mean by that like TikTok hippies now are more than like a nice nostalgic homage to a distant past that actually raises quite important questions about like cultural appropriation, authenticity, you know, activism in the age of social media, which is kind of like so deeply entwined with like virtual signaling and navigating that wise, trying to show a counterculture movement. There's a lot of trials and tribulations in that. Before I get too into myself and kind of info dump on the latest thing I've been researching on, let me show you a couple of these TikTok hippies that are pretty infamous on the internet for their own different reasons. Up first, when you type in hippie on TikTok, you'll be greeted by this human who has gathered so much attention online for their hippie ways. But not only that, also because they're wearing clip-in dreads and they do like this face at the start of their videos. I'm unsure if they're trying to like pretend that they're high. They're trying to cosplay being like, whoa, that stuff was strong, bro. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know what they're trying to do with it, but they like pulling this face. Anyway, it's kind of like their gimmick and they basically wear hippie clothing, but they get a lot of heat because people are like, your house is super big. You don't seem like a hippie. Well, actually, 
you do seem like a hippie. A lot of hippie culture is deep rooted in the middle class, you know, rebelling against their parents. It's not a phase, mum. And then I'll end up in like one of the best universities or colleges in the world and work in finance. It was a phase. Now I want to secure the bag. But again, we're digressing and I will get into all of that. The pros and cons and the reality of what hippieism, don't know if that's a word, was all about later on. But let's show you some more of the hippies that I find on TikTok. Another absolute heavyweight in the hippie TikTok world is this human. And uh, I'm not gonna show you them singing because I don't know if they can demonetize this, but they talk about all sorts of crazy stuff that's kicked up a real big storm on TikTok recently. You know, they've been talking about how they cured their kidney infection, <laughs> which, <laughs> terrifying. I, anyone that always talks about home curing remedies as opposed to you know going to an actual doctor scares me and they always pit it as like no they're trying to poison you <laughs> they're trying to poison you with their pharmaceuticals yes that's why the average age has been going up for generations don't quote me on that but i'm pretty sure we live a lot longer than we did in the tudor times when you get like mauled by a cow and then they'd be like shit uh, <laughs> but you know what i mean quality of life is is going up, I think, I want to say. Is it? Right? Right, guys? I don't know. I think it is. Both these TikTok characters don the most, like, stereotypical hippie garms. Like, almost if you typed in hippie on AI, it would give you these two characters. You know, just, like, two absolute total legends. But it really does look like if senior management, really out of touch with the world, were, like, told to make a hippie character that people would consume. This is the byproduct. We've got one that sings the most god-awful lyrics in the world, and we've got another one that wears clipping dreads and dances around <laughs> to, like, the most generic music. But hey, I love it all. It's all good fun, right? Well, not really. Let's get into why I think it's wickety-whack and not all of that. Initially, let's start off with cultural appreciation versus cultural appropriation. Zooey mama. Please strap on in, maybe grab some food, or maybe just put this video on in the background, because this is going to be a long one of me rambling why. Though at the surface level, these people may seem, oh, it's harmless, they're just having fun. But what they're actually kind of perpetuating is not good, really. So, like, within, like, the OG days of hippie culture, you know, like, when your legal guardians were, like, getting high in a random field somewhere, like, 40 years ago, a lot of it was taking elements from marginalized communities and making it part of the hippie movement. Now, maybe there was a case to be made back in the day that, like, they were super aware of all of this, so it's more on the lines of cultural appreciation rather than appropriation, maybe because they were super entwined with it all, but now it feels kind of distasteful when like 40 years later, you see kids wearing clip-on dreads dancing around with some like hemp trousers, or another person rapping about the pyramids and saying all sorts of like nonsense and just there. It doesn't seem tasteful. It seems like it's kind of lost its way a lot. And also I should note in case there's some like, like OG hippies in here or just like my older audience that were more aware of the hippie movement or were actually around during the time. There's actually a real big argument to be made that like a lot of the hippie culture even back in the day, apart from like the core maybe hip hip hipsters, um, they're actually a different faction. The core original hippies, a lot of them were actually just middle class kids cosplaying, being different, being in, in tune with the world. And once they got bored, they just buggered off back to the big city and got a corporate job at their parents' firm, you know? So maybe they were also cultural appropriation to the max. But I suppose back in the day, we were not as attuned and as aware as we are now about why that's not very cool, just taking from marginalized communities and doing what we want with it. No, that should be considered too. I'm not trying to paint it out like the OG hippies were perfect. I'm just saying now in modern times, they seem even further from what the OG goal was. You know, seemingly it looks like this person hasn't really given a second thought about, you know, dreads or their, you know, cultural significance or whatever. And they've just been like, yeah, I'm gonna buy these clip on ones and, and, and wear them. That seems pretty not cool to me, right? You know, and you might just be like, Cal, they're a kid, you know, peace and love. They seem happy. Yes, they seem happy, but at what cost? And like, they're just kind of like, not, I'm not rewriting history is not the right word, but they're kind of just like taking 
from different aspects of history, different aspects of culture that hasn't always been at the forefront and they're taking it as their own and making it cool and quirky and, and swag when some of those qualities in different communities weren't considered that. But now that it's like a white appearing person doing it, they're like, yo, that's so dope and free spirited. And when I think of it like that, I don't really care that it's a kid. I still think it's super whack. And or you would hope the legal guardians would step in and be like, hold up, wait a minute. That's not swag. You should be more conscientious with your choices online. And sorry if you're new to this channel and you're like, this guy's jarring. He tries to make points and then he uses words like swag and not cool and whack. I hope that doesn't take away from like the totality or the meaningfulness of my words. I am trying with that vid every video essay to get more compelling. <laughs> it's a work in progress, but we've got a good community down in the comment sections where we discuss things. But yeah, bear with me, please. But yeah, it really does seem distasteful from like a moral standpoint that like this creator can just whack on some clipping dreads which you know some people will take years years and years to grow and within their communities they hold like significance and like cultural value whereas this person's probably just gone on sheen and just been like clipping dreads baggy clothes hemp elephants stickers and and they can just jump into it all without really Acknowledging all the history and depth there, which kind of brings me on to point two, which is the commodification of counterculture. And basically by that, I mean by like how over the years, hippie culture and the hippie movement has gone from being this meaningful thing to being like consumerized. I don't know if that's a word, but basically being made to the open market and its ideas and ideologies being sold as like fun clothes, bright co clothes, tie dye, tie dye tops, baggy hemp trousers, dream catchers. It's been taken from this actual core message of like peace and love and acceptance and being anti-war and protesting injustices to now just like, whoa, so cool. You got the dream catcher in your car and you, you got the fun hippie top and the, and the baggy pants. You're so spirited. I can tell you're a spiritual person. See, it, it seems distasteful, doesn't it? But this is not really shots at the creators themselves, more just like how mainstream media and capitalism will always take from subcultures and like countercultures and movements because they just want to make money. They see it as an opportunity to jump on things. Like, you know how people make a case with the artist Youngblood, who's meant to be like punk and alternative, that he is just a capitalistic idea of being punk that they can like consumerize and package off and sell to like young kids that want to push away from their parents' ideologies and concepts but i don't really think that's young blood's fault in such he's just more like a thing that's being sold to people but once again we do digress and i want to stick on track to hippies in this video but from like the 60s onwards when it reached the peak since then it kind of seems like the hippie culture has just been completely diluted down to just young people on tiktok being like free spirit this is my outfit to today or going traveling or why is it when people generally when people go traveling they do feel the need to don the baggy hippie trousers and some like i don't know god awful t-shirt why does that happen i don't know we all just play the cards we're dealt i suppose but i feel you could have made a better choice but getting back onto the point of like the consumerization of hippie culture why it is actually pretty problematic is it's because it's taking this actual type of person that represents something within society you know rebelling against the political and social agenda, pushing back, challenging people's norms, you know, challenging the status quo, an actual good thing to have in society. People that do challenge the mainstream and raise good questions about morality and how things should be done. And it's being like made this thing that can no longer be indistinguished between, you know, that actual movement and just a middle class kid living out their best life. Oh, I'm so quirky. I'm in my hippie era. Two years later, Simon was working in a bank. The duality of man. We all want to have fun until we've got bills to pay. But that's, again, not really Simon's problem. It's more like the curse of existence that you have to become a cog in the machine. Anyway, I'm starting to sound like a hippie <laughs> when I'm actually just trying to talk about hippies. But because of this, like, over-consumerization of the hippie movement, it no longer feels like a political movement. When now when someone tells me they're a hippie, I just mean they literally just mean they like the baggy clothes and they're a bit free-spirited with their hygiene routine, which, fair enough, each to their own, I guess. But it is a shame, to be serious. And I don't think it's like a 
oh, it just happened kind of thing. I think the bigger powers that be like the bigger corporations knew they could weaken this movement by just selling it to everyone, making it so that we all just jump on the trend so that these people can't be distinguished from the norm now. It's just this fashion trend, you know, the actual messages and what they're trying to send out to people will no longer get taken on board because, oh, cool, nice baggy trousers and nice angles and bracelets. So cool. And I love your Birkenstocks. You know, people are no longer listening to the actual message. It's more, how cool do you look? How well packaged do you look? Do you look like the perfect hippie? You're so crazy. Or I saw it in that movie and now it's cool. That's what a hippie is. The cool laid back girl having fun. There's no like real message there. That's at least being perpetuated online anymore. Yeah, and I suppose with that, it kind of naturally leads me on to my next point, which is like surface level activism and performative wokeness. And in the age of like TikTok, it's so, so easy to do like performative activism and just appearing woke like this human. Yes, they get a lot of flack and hate, but also people are like, they're not doing anything wrong. They're keeping hippie culture alive. They're not really keeping anything alive. They've just put on an outfit and danced around. What message are they telling you there? And don't dare be like, well, sometimes a movement or an action or a movie or whatever speaks a thousand words. You don't have to say anything. No, you can't just fucking log into the system, download a random aesthetic and be like, yeah, I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for the movement. You're doing shit all for the movement. You're just diluting it and making it fucking whack and 10 times harder for people that are actually trying to perpetuate good ideologies in the world, you know, peace and love. And even when I say it now, it sounds cringe, but peace and love are great integral things to the universe that we need more of in these very hostile and dire times with what's going on in the world right now. It's harrowing. But no, I just want to see white person slap on some dreads and dance around and pull a high face. That gets millions of likes. But the people from the marginalized communities that these modern day freaking TikTok hippies are, are taking from, when they speak up, where, where are their views? Where are their likes? And again, that's not me taking shots at, you know, any of you people viewing. It's not to make myself feel bad or yourself feel bad. It's just like what gets pushed forwards is more like this rage baity content, which provokes a real initial reaction in someone's head of like, oh, that's a stinky hippie or, oh, that's so cool. I love hippies. That like the duality of like the young mind. It's either I hate it and that's gross because I don't understand it or it's I love it and I want to be a part of it just because I want some sort of identity to cling on to. And I think that's very prominent in the in modern times. Uh, it's a very challenging time for young people. And I don't mean like my age because I'm a literal adult, you know? <laughs> I should be able to do the bare minimum, but like I mean like uh, young teenage minds like when you're so vulnerable and you just want to be seen as a good person because you don't have much totality at that point in life. You've got your schooling time, your education time, maybe some time with your friends, but there's all this other time in your day. So I think a lot of performative activism does happen online and it kind of dilutes the meaningness of it all. Like this human wearing the hippie clothing or whatever isn't actually sending out any amazing message. It's vapid, it's just, it looks good if you kind of don't really know anything about hippies, like, oh, hippies so cool, so free-spirited, but like, they're not raising awareness of anything. Not that it's their responsibility, I suppose, but when you are taking on the character of a hippie pretty seriously in all your content, you would like to see them do something with that platform, maybe? Because if they're taking from hippie culture, which is rooted in, you know, standing up against the machine, being different, you know, being anti-establishment or whatever, and you're doing sweet fuck all with it, whilst taking from marginalized communities, it really does just seem like classic wanky white person doing whatever they want, which they do time and time again. Not swag, not cool. What's up with that? And it's the same with, like, the rapping person. Like, they advocate for this performative activism rather over any sort of activism and like another idea of this off the top of my head is like with like the just stop oil people and this also links in with like the og hippie culture there's lots of middle class young kids that are in just stop oil and obviously just stop oil is a good thing but like these middle class kids can afford to go out and protest and can afford to live that lifestyle of just doing all these things and being very active because they know they've got the safety blanket of mummy and daddy. And it gets into a bit of a more social moral dilemma when it's, you know, the underprivileged people coming in and joining these movements like hippie culture back in the day or like just a oil nowadays because when they get arrested, they don't have the safety net of mummy and daddy and the rich bank accounts to fall back on to get them jobs and stuff and still 
get them employed in places, they'll just have the criminal record and maybe not the good support network to help them. And that's where people fall into pits of, you know, other sad endings. And this is kind of, I guess, what you saw, and it's a critique of OG hippieism, is like a lot of it was just like the middle class cosplaying, which is pretty sad, as I said earlier, because it will get everyone will find it appealing because it's the current core trend. And then when the non middle class privileged get into it, they're left high and dry at the end of it all because they've just done it because they thought everyone was part of it. But you really thought Ethel, Gabriel, Bertram, all these posh named people are going to stick with it? No, of course not. They were just at the protest for social currency and to feel like a good human. They're then still going to bugger off to their <laughs> great jobs afterwards, which I don't think in totality makes them a... It's so complex though, isn't it? Because everybody's just doing what feels right for them at the time. I just don't think how everybody really thinks about how impactful it is long term but how can you i suppose when you're caught up in the moment that's a dilemma in itself there's so many like mini essays within this video essay on like morality and values and what truly makes someone a good or bad person and that's tough and i don't think that can be answered so on the spot and maybe i can conclude towards that towards the end but right now i just want to keep tackling the problems of why like the modern age hippie you see on tiktok is kind of fucking up the whole thing even more than it already was. I mean, the far cries of what hippie culture was, you know, eons ago, I say eons, that's rude to old people, but like 40 years ago is so distant to what it is now. And it's a shame because TikTok can really be a place that can be used to like spearhead societal change and combat racism and social injustice and, you know, raise awareness of the horrific, harrowing things going on across the world. But <laughs> when this shit is the stuff getting views it's kind of just like ah uh, heck and you could argue well it's not this creator's problem cal they're just having fun but no it kind of is when their whole gig is being a hippie being a free spirit do more please you may be young but hey if you're gonna come on the internet and don this hippie persona and do some pretty questionable things like where the clip on dreads which i just do want to say is is not cool you know you've got to be very aged up and mature and at least do something good with that platform because then otherwise why are you taking so much from it probably because you know in a few years time you're just going to be a regular human with a great job because we'll just come cogs in the machine and i now sound like a hippie again when i'm not even trying to be but it's just the reality of life which we'll also get into in the conclusion. Dear Lord, this is sporadic. However, that really does finally get me into my next point, which I have kind of alluded to throughout this video already, of like privilege and the disconnect from reality, which is so deep rooted in that hippie world since the dawn of the hippie movement. I was about to say since the dawn of time and space, but to be fair, peace and love has probably always been around, but the hippies as we know them, the 60s is where we've got a timestamp before for this video. There were actually people before that were like the origin where they were like starting the hippie movement, but I don't want to get into that today. I think when you look at like the TikTok hippie movement, you've got to realize it comes from such a privileged world view. You know, of one where you know you can flip in dreads and dance around some tunes and that gets millions of likes and you know you can be part of the hippie movement. All of that kind of overlooks all the actual issues going on in like marginalized communities. You know, this like peace and love type vibe, but not actually doing anything with it. And obviously you wouldn't come at someone with this sort of totality or this sort of judgment if they weren't a hippie or they weren't claiming to be like this. I don't even know what this is, but you know what I mean? Like, ah, type of person. But if they are, surely you should be really on it for like your social work and stuff you do. I don't know if I worded that right, but you know what I mean. It all just feels very empty and vapid like you're watching a TikTok because you are watching a TikTok. <laughs> this is society. And the fact that I said you're watching a TikTok is so funny. But like all of it is just like brain mosh, brain rot of just like people want to see you make it look like you're doing a good thing rather than actually doing the good thing which is more telling of like what society's current state is rather than just the hippie culture or their lack of hippie culture and i think it's something that's like really prominent in like middle class culture and you know i can give like first-hand experience of this you know coming from a very middle class town back home is like middle class people's desire to like romanticize an alternative lifestyle and like spiritual practices as a way to like escape the expectations of their reality and they can do so freely because they are middle class without addressing the actual 
elephant in the room or the actual issues. And you may at this point be thinking, oh, boo-hoo, cow. And yeah, I agree. Oh, boo-hoo. What a privileged problem to be able to, like, cosplay whatever fucking character loadout you want. Like, it's a Fortnite skin in the shop. Yeah, I want that one today. <laughs> Two years later, I've gone from the hemp trousers to the freaking hemp expensive suit while I'm sailing in Monaco. And then next year, I'm going to be a banker. <laughs> Why did I do anime hands? That throws out the whole sanctity of this whole video lord but you know instead of like these middle class bandits actually like questioning why they feel these pressures and what is at the root of them you know feeling they have to be this certain person they just cosplay a different person until it's time to you know get back to reality and get a job until that pressure becomes too real and all that does is kind of destroys the actual subculture movements because it will give it like this initial driving force and then everyone just dissipates and just leaves it and then all the other people that got thrown in and got hooked him because they think it's this cool thing and I just left high and dry, you know, the people that aren't so privileged, you know, it fucks them up for life. And then everyone else can just be like, yeah, that was awkward. Or, you know, they can just tell funny stories like 40 years later being like, yeah, mummy and daddy were actually hippies, you know, we were free spirits. When you're not, you're just fucking dicking around without thinking about the ramifications of everything. And like I said, it's not in totality their fault. It's a very complex thing, especially when you're young and trying to find self-identity and I'm starting to worry if a lot of this doesn't make sense it's now turning into a bit of a ramble but it's such a complex thing because not only are we targeting the hippie culture and movement and how it's been like diluted into just dancing around with clip-on dreads in and wrapping some just crap and nonsense but it's also like self-exploration and finding yourself as a person <sighs> which is also another complex one because the middle class people, people that have disposable money, ones that grew up with lots of money around them, do get so much more freedom to just cosplay different loadouts, to cosplay different cultures and, and communities and take from loads of different communities, you know, big and small, ones that don't get much attention to them, only when it's a white person taking from it, you know, and they get to do all of this without really being aware of it. And then they can just bugger off to their, you know, their lovely family home after it's all done. And that, when you think of it like that, it is disgusting and it's icky. But like I said, it's often young people doing this. And I don't think when you're young, you truly think about the ramifications of everything you're doing. You're kind of like this big explosion of emotions just kind of taking from different things. And it takes a very switched on mind to be very aware of what you're doing when you're young, right? And that's not me saying like, I was running around with like dreads being just horrific and cringe gosh no never luckily i didn't go down that route i was you know perpetually online and just sat in my room most of the time but i can see i don't know how people just get lost in distasteful things along the way in the big pursuit to try and find themselves and that's not me condoning it to i don't want you to ever think i'm defending the people that do this i just don't think in totality they're awful people like though i think like what a lot of this person is doing is not okay and it really is just cultural appropriation and and that's not good for society as it just once again taking from people that don't get the spotlight as much as you know funny white person that wears clip-on dreads and dances around i don't think in totality this person is like heinous evil overlord you know with horns 666 six, six, whatever you know i don't think they're like the antichrist it's a complex one right and i hope we all are at that mindset of like you can appreciate some of this stuff is it's really bad but they're also probably just not that switched on and they're probably very young and they don't realize all the whack things they're doing which i think is what a lot of the hippie culture was like people just wanted to join in especially back in the day as well just the middle class just wanted to join in and i'm not condoning it once again i do think it is bad but that young mind just going in there because they're like oh peace and love that's fun or we can have fun or we can do all these things and they can get to cosplay all these different characters and they get to dip afterwards i can see why people get drawn into these movements for that right they get to have all the fun of it they get to have the virtue of singing and they get to feel good because they went to the protests when they're not actually the ones really making the changes it's the actual poor members actually really do live and die by this shit that are making the big changes but i suppose them being there showing their support was like oh my gosh it's i'm just rambling and i'm actually trying to make good points as well and it's stressing me out but like there's just so much to consider here with this video. But I think because of that, like, random ranting, it actually has brought me on to my next point of, like, intersectionality and how, like, a lot of at the forefront of at least hippie culture nowadays and probably also a lot in the past when I, from what I've seen from, like, research and stuff I've done into this, is a lot of when you look at hippie culture, it's directed through the lens of, like, the middle class white person. You know, a lot of it out of its centre is about the experience of a white middle class person cosplaying these movements and having fun and whatever, rather than you know, the other marginalized members that were also part of this community. And by at the center of it all, I mean like, you know, shown in movies or like the big ones on TikTok nowadays, or like when you type in hippie culture, like it's just like 
white people having fun or whatever. And because of that, it basically suppresses the voices of anyone that isn't middle class and white, which isn't really inclusive at all, which is kind of counterintuitive when we're talking about hippies right at their core. They're meant to be peace and love, but it's peace and love if you're white and you're middle class and you've got a trust fund, you know? That shit's whack, man, come on. And also, more moving away from, like, the social political issues with the modern-day hippie, more of, like, an actual, like, eco point or issue, like, a environmentalist point, is, like, how hippies were meant to be, like, this, you know, environmentally friendly movement. Whereas a lot of these creators on TikTok look like they might be wearing, like, a lot of fast fashion, and dare I say, I don't know, we're going back to it again, but those clipping dreads, now that doesn't seem very hippie to me. But I suppose this links in with my earlier points of how it's just like performative and it's looking like the character rather than actually having the depth of the character. So, you know, they look like a hippie, so they must be a free spirit and they must have all the ideologies without actually ever talking about all the ideologies or doing anything that suggests they do have those ideologies, but because of social media, you know, if they squint their eyes and dance around and have some fun and they seem like a free spirit, then they just are this, like, second coming of hippieism or whatever. Like, these two creators are complete contradictions of the actual movement, which I suppose a lot of people were anyway back then. And I don't want you to think it's like a witch hunt necessarily for these two people. More just like the lack of thought that goes on in people's heads when they put content online. Just maybe have a Google before you decide to download a personality off the internet and live it online. There are many good things about the hippie movement, e.g. Peace and love, bro. Kisses. There are also many bad things about the hippie movement. So, you know, maybe just be a little more aware when you're on the internet. And I suppose even, like, conversely, say, like, you saw one of these creators be like, well, here's this eco-friendly product, and then you would all be like, yeah, cow, look, you're wrong, they advertise this. That could just also be greenwashing, my dude. Like, come on, Rand says we're so good and cool, we're so eco-friendly. Kind of all just screams greenwashing to me now, which I know is a shame, but like, you've got to think of like the bigger impact environmentally with all of these things. It's almost like that feel of, yay, this conglomerate's got this cool green-friendly product and the hippie people are advertising it on their pages. Just don't look at the re what the rest of this conglomerate is doing at the expense of the environment and humanity. <laughs> Dear Lord. And I think with that, I'd like to now start the long descent into the conclusion. And I hope like you've kind of seen from like my random explosions of like rambling and digression. And I hope it hasn't been too confusing and jarring that just like how complex in nature this whole thing is. Because when you attack something like, you know, the hippie movement and how like these creators online are, are just further diluting it and how it has been diluted over like the generations. You then also attack like the intricacies and the complexity of it all because when you just pick at one thing, you then have to pick at like three other things. It's like the head of Hydra with this. You, you pick at one thing and then there's like three other things behind it. And you know why at the surface, the modern day TikTok hippie might be just like, yeah, so free spirit and having fun. There's just a wealth or like just an avalanche of just like pure shit and injustice behind it and just cultural appropriation to the max and doing it in like fast fashion methods as well, which really does just seem heinous and wrong. And I think a lot of these creators don't realize what they're doing. And I'm not just saying it's these two creators. There's a whole bunch of creators on TikTok. These are just like the poster children for hippie TikTok. So I use them as examples in this video. And I do stress mainly just for the younger one. I don't think in totality, they're probably not an awful human. Like I really do want to stress that. The older one that raps does say a lot of questionable shit and perpetuates ideas that are linked to white supremacy you know, with the pyramid thing, but I won't digress into that because we'll be here all day. We're trying to battle like the five heads of moral hydra. The young one, like, I, don't get me wrong, I think the, the, the dreads and shit is horrific, to put it bluntly. I'm currently putting that down to like sheer fucking naiveness and just not being aware. And let me know in the comments if you think that's too nice. But with that, let's get further into this conclusion as we, we're trying to make headway with this whole thing, right? I think the big issue with the modern day TikTok hippie or whatever you want to call them is a lot of it seems to be cultural appropriation, consumerization, you know, virtue signaling, being performative without actually <laughs> giving anything or acknowledging anything to the original hippie movement. And, you know, like the radical, fast moving, 
political and social movement that it was it doesn't really seem like any of that it kind of just seems like this vapid window shopping like yeah you like hippies we've got hippies which i suppose is literally what tiktok is right you know the algorithm knows what you're interested in or knows what will provoke a reaction from you and it's just like here it is have it in like the most one-dimensional version ever like a 2d shape there's no depth to it it's not 3d yet and i think that's what a lot of people online are they just cosplay characters because they know gets a interaction which is sad and that's not just limited to the hippie movement it's limited to lots of movements that are getting further and further diluted just by people donning a certain look without any depth behind it but you know i'm sure like with all the other sub movements hippie culture is here to stay on tiktok so i think it's important that like if you want to be part of that community and you are interested in it you know make sure you interact with the creators that are from like marginalized communities or the ones that aren't getting as much attention you know basically the ones that are just like the severely middle class white kids having fun you know give attention to everyone if, it, if, it, if it's important for you you know if it's not important for you and you just clicked on this because hippies don't really float your boat then i guess just scroll on with it all it's you know it doesn't make you a horrific person if you don't engage with all the content you know for one reason or another but you know if you are part of this movement surely you'd want to give all the voices a chance to speak up and not just further perpetuate the ideas that it is just middle class white kids cosplaying these characters, right? Inclusivity over exclusivity, surely that's what the hippie movement should be about. But like ultimately, though this video has been very targeted towards like the hippies on TikTok, I think it really does raise awareness about something much broader in general which is like how the hippie movement has changed over years and through like social media and stuff it all kind of like serves as a reflection of broader social trends and tensions you know it highlights the ongoing struggle for authenticity in this very give me more give me more give me more superficial five second video world the social change in the digital era it's so tough to capture people's attentions and you could just say you know by donning these very stereotypical looks like it's been made by creepy old man incorporated concepts of a hippie you do gather our attentions normally in a rage bait sense but how then do they take that attention and actually communicate a powerful you know meaningful message and that in itself is a challenge and that's the thing people like to care at surface level it's tough to get someone to sit down and actually listen for like a long time unless you're actually like interested in that person in general right but you know as i always say like having these moments of like real critical analysis and you know just open conversation with each other where there's not so much right and wrong and we're cutting throats but more like just like an open dialect it actually does you know contribute i like to think towards a better future you know a more socially fair future which you know which emphasizes importance on like inclusivity and authenticity you know being the real you and if you are gonna be a hippie online fucking own it and know a lot about it and do perpetuate some good ideas and do spread peace and love like you're meant to do and not just dance around with clipping dreads please and i think that kind of wraps it up i think yeah what a world oh my goodness i hope this one has made sense and it hasn't just been sheer nonsense well if it has then i'm i'm deeply sorry i i the hippie thing's really interested me for some time now i keep seeing these creators on my feed so i kind of just wanted to talk about them and i've been researching them as a back burner for quite a few weeks now so it's always tough when i get all this info in my head i get so excited i just want to dump it out there and i know when i get excited to talk about things it's not always super like articulate i'm very excitable i'm very like jittery and i just want to talk and talk and talk so if there's any things you think i didn't explain that clearly or maybe you're an actual og hippie and you wanted to have a conversation in the in the comment section i'm always down to have a conversation even if you know you don't agree with things i've said you know look i'm always happy to have my mind changed or if you think i haven't explained things correctly or i've done things in misjustice look let's just all talk about it below do you agree with me that it has just been saturated into this thing where like hippie now just means the way you dress rather than this actual social political phenomenon and powerhouse long gone are the days of the protesting and being anti-war here are the days of clipping dreads and hemp trousers and those jokes are getting old now so that's where we shall wrap this one up i have been your boy cattle's life if you've enjoyed this video essay there'll be another one here and i shall see you all in the next video okay bye